Shalom, brother and sister truth seekers. Here's an update on the calendar, Covenant Calendar Club Sundial Project. Uh, they've been practicing over the summer uh, with the goal of uh, getting good practice over the fall equinox so they'll be prepared for the spring equinox. And i uh, been collecting all the pictures to this Facebook group. And if you check the link in the description below this video, there'll be a link to a public Dropbox folder where you can check out all the photos if you want to take a closer look. Uh, but this is uh, an update for uh, what's been collected recently. So this is a note, uh, depending on where you live, the straight line shadow pattern is what we're looking for. And I guess modern science is, is saying that's going to happen somewhere around the 22nd or the 23rd. It's a really funky thing, and um, I don't... I don't know exactly what to think of it, but, like, this is going to be a big year. I think this is the first time, like, a bunch of people have been practicing and all around the world are going to try and, and measure this event. And, I mean, if we can get a con good confirmation of where the straight line was seen first around the world, that will be very useful to compare to what we saw earlier this spring and possibly answer some questions to understand what the sun is doing up in the heavens and at this moment i am not exactly sure and i'm sitting on the edge of my seat to see what happens uh <laughs> but anyway so we've got uh oh i might have done this backwards but or oh, maybe oh, okay this might have been first so july 3rd and then august 19th so you can see uh, this sister collected data two different times of year, about a month and a half apart, and the yellow line is like in the summer, and the blue line is just uh, a couple weeks ago. And so that's really cool how you can see how much the shadow pattern has progressed and how you can see that pattern is straightening out. Uh, and it looks like, uh, yeah, this is just good practice. The times of day, I can see one of them was from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So, I mean, this is this is excellent practice and an excellent location. It looks like you're still getting plenty of sun in the morning and the evening. I hope it looks like there's a didn't get a, a later point out here, but maybe that was just, uh, just because uh, clouds or something. Hopefully, there's not a tree blocking the early morning point or a house shadow blocking that early morning point. Um, that's something everyone needs to kind of be careful and watch out for this, this time of year. If they've been practicing over the summer as they pick back up, uh, they'll want to double check their location to make sure they're still getting an early morning and a late evening sunshine on their, their location. Um, and we'll talk more about that a little later, but good practice. This is excellent data. Uh, you, you look like you're blessed with a, an excellent location where you can collect data like all day. So not that you necessarily have to collect all day. It's just most important that you get one point in the early morning and one in the late evening and one around midday. Um, and I think there was a question about solar noon. We can talk about that in, in another, uh, looking at some other data as well, but you what might notice people might be noticing that the solar noon time seems to jump around a little bit and um, for the intents and purposes of this sundial data uh, looking for the straight line I don't think it's going to make a big difference but it's just interesting and something to be aware of you know modern science has come up with these clocks based off of atoms vibrating or whatever it is and I mean they're they're now now all the clocks are like synchronized and i don't know if any of you have ever had a watch or a clock that was on like a phone or some device that wasn't connected to the internet and wasn't syncing but every now and again it just seems like they slip like a minute off like over a couple of years or something and i've noticed that a couple of times over the years but so i mean all that to say like modern science has tried to come up with clock times but clock time is not luminary time and like it doesn't genesis 114 the lights in the heavens are what he gave us for times and so it's it's a little different than like man does his best to try and sync these clocks and these calendars with 
with uh, the movements of the heavenly luminaries, but it's not exact. So you see little fluctuations like this. It's just what's important is the sun is going to hit a max position on this curve. And as long as you're approximately close to that, within like half an hour, uh, you should be good if you can get a point within 30 minutes of your approximate solar noon time. Like that should be plenty of, uh, like if you just look, they don't move that much around solar noon. So if you get a point just somewhere around solar noon, you, you should be able to tell pretty easily comparing to your first morning point and your late evening point. If, uh, the line was curved, if, if that solar noon point is above or below your line, and we'll talk more about the line in a minute. Here's some more uh, practice from Missouri, and I believe this was this brother's first attempt at collecting sundial data, so good job with your first attempt. It looks like you have a pretty good setup. Uh, I guess there was something going on with that first morning point. Looks like 711, and then the one above it is 8. I think I saw a note somewhere about needing to shift the paper or the setup uh just i mean this was his first attempt so that that, that kind of thing can happen uh just you want to make sure that you have a nice big recording surface as you start to get a feel for where where these pattern these shadow patterns gonna be and if you have to add more paper uh or another board uh i mean just make sure everything is flat uh, and, and when you do find a good location, make sure your setup does not move, uh, after you, you finally get all the bugs worked out. Um, but yeah, make sure it doesn't move and make sure the recording surface is flat. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, but it does have to be flat. If there are like bumps in your paper or the papers like sticking up off the board or something like that can make things move around, um, and make it confusing to... To understand what's going on but good job with your first attempt okay and this comes from danon in california and he had a few questions going on he's been looking at the progression of the data all since the spring very diligently and um you know one thing he's been trying to pay very close attention to is how much the shadow is shifting from one day to the next so you can see here he got data on the 18th and the 19th and it it moved that much. It looks like above there he's pointing to data from the 26th, which appears to have moved quite a bit, which is almost looks kind of surprising how much that moved. Um, but he also had that question about solar noon, I think, the points moving around. And so I would say the same thing to him uh, and everyone if they're noticing those slight movements in the solar noon time. But the other big question he had uh, was he didn't he drew this line if you see these arrows and he was wondering i believe he was wondering why are the solar noon times below his arrow or his quote unquote straight line like this is you know what we're we're we're, we're going to be comparing points to this you know we're looking for the straight line but you got to be careful the straight line we're looking for is the line that connects your first data point of the day to your last data point of the day. So it looks like maybe his he's just got a line up there, and I don't know if it's pointing due east or it's pointing at the rising sun, or I'm not sure what the orientation of that line is pointing at. But when you collect your data, the, the quote-unquote straight line or the line that we are referring to in all of this is just simply you, 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 you pull a string or you get a straight edge and you draw a line from your first point of the day to your last point of the day. And then you see where the midday point compares to that line you drew. And when you do that... In, in this data set, you'll see that solar noon point is still above the line. When you connect the, the early morning point to the late evening point, you'll see that that solar noon point is still above the line. So it'll slowly get closer and closer and closer to that straight line. If you want to get in the practice of pulling a line or a string to from your first and last data points of the day, and you'll see... I mean, the, the curve is going to straighten out, and that midday point is going to get closer and closer to that line that you draw until one day it's on the line, and then the day following it's off the line, below the line. So that's the important pattern we're looking for. It's absolutely essential, if at all possible, that you try to get three days of data around this event 
so you can see your you can see the curve one way uh when the when the your midday point is above that line and then the next day you see that point on the line the midday point on the line and the third day you see the midday point below the line and those correspond with the the different curves that you see uh, it'll be the normal curve and then a straight line and then a flipped curve and you're just comparing your midday mark to the straight line that you draw between your first point of the day and your last point of the day and so yeah it's it's just important if at all possible get three days of data at a minimum and uh, I know <laughs> we'll just have to see what happens um, I don't I don't quite know what to what to think of it yet uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these events like really I don't know that it's ever been done with a, a terrible amount of like a, a wonderful wonderful amount <laughs> of truth seekers uh, collecting data. I think maybe one time it was, but I mean, it's, it's something that's not been tested too much. And, um, there are a lot of questions about what's going to be happening for the seasonal transition. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing what's happening. And, uh, these are just more pictures of his data, different angles on what we just talked about. So this, I guess, is the last thing I just wanted to try to encourage people about, uh, you know, uh, do your best and uh, be watchful. And uh, even if you live in the forest and you you think you have trees all around you and you won't be able to get like early morning or late evening points because there are trees all around, there are things you can watch out for. And you just need, as we get, now is the time. <laughs> you need to be when you wake up in the morning, you need to look around your yard and look for the, the ground in your yard that is getting sunlight in the early morning. And, and then put like a flag or mark that area if you're still looking for a location or you didn't think you had a location. You might have one, even if you're surrounded by woods, you might have a location. And you just, you gotta, when you wake up in the morning, look around. Like I live in a homestead and I'm surrounded by trees. But the thing is, the sun in the early morning and the late evening can kind of shine under and around the trees into pieces of my yard. So I only own like about 10 or 20 feet beyond this tree line you see. That's a little bit of my field up there. But uh, I mean, that's that's this is a late evening shot and there's sunshine down there at a good late evening point. And I know in the morning, the sunshine comes in from the other side and it does get under these trees. And so the thing I'm going to be looking for is to see, well, where is it then at solar noon? Like you need to look and make sure that location is getting sunlight early morning, late evening, and was well, somewhere around solar noon. And like, even though you might be surrounded by trees, I still encourage you to get out and look because where my finger's pointing out just that little bit of sunlight there that's all you need if there's a little pocket where the sun is actually getting through and you can put a board there and collect data that that's all you need right there to get one of those late evening points or early morning points so i encourage you to be on the lookout for that all right, I guess that's it for this uh, this update we are now in that gregorian month of september and uh you know, the, this, this event we're looking for is getting really close, two to three weeks away. So I, I encourage you now is the time definitely get out and double check, start double checking your location because shadows may have moved around from the summertime to, uh, to now. And you, you want to double check that house shadows and shadows from trees and things are not blocking your setup. So um, stay tuned for more. Get out there and practice. And uh, if you want to join the effort and you're... Uh, just uh, look for this uh, this Facebook group or uh, leave a comment and uh, let us know or shoot me an email a voice of truth and love at gmail.com and we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll you can share your data with everyone else and we can all work together to see if we can confirm some things about uh, this uh, important time piece of our creator so Shalom and may Abba bless you to continually seek out his truth and love with a pure heart